We're glad to know you're still there. It's still uh, the breakfast on Plus TV Africa right now. Uh, federal government suspends accreditation of degree certificates from Benin Republic and Togo is our topic of discussion. And to do that with me is Dr. Peter Ogudoro, education researcher. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Okay, we've been crying on this program and uh, you have always been our guest talking about how education is not being funded and uh, uh, being run in the first place in Nigeria. And a lot of people are running away from Nigeria to go and get education elsewhere. In fact, in the 2024 budget, it's only 7% or slightly above 7% as against the um, globally accepted 25% or so that was allocated to uh, education in our budget. Now that people are going elsewhere to seek an education, we found out that also <laughs> it's as if our evils are following us to other countries. Now Bene and Togo uh, have had their uh, certificates suspended in the Nigerian educational system. What, first of all, does it mean to even suspend the accreditation of certificates coming from these countries? Well, what um, the federal government has said in effect is that we are no longer uh, um, very sure that the people who claim that they um, possess degrees from those universities uh, have knowledge and skills that match what their certificates um, are, presenting them, are presenting them to have. And so since that is the case, um, we can't trust that anybody who comes in from there to uh, present himself or herself as a university graduate is truly one. And we cannot afford to uh, trust uh, products of such, such places to do work at the level of uh, graduates in Nigeria. That's basically what they're trying to say. So what about the people who have already had their certificates accredited, accredited and they have gone for youth service and they are not working? Are, you, are they going to withdraw them? No, certainly I do not think that it's retrogressive. This has to apply to people who are coming uh, with degrees from those kinds of places in the future. Um, if they make it retrogressive, unless uh, we have evidence that proves that the people who possess those certificates didn't uh, follow appropriate procedures to get them. That, um, other than that, I do not think that uh, it's retrogressive. Was anything said about uh, the people who may be authentic, were really authentic people in the school, they studied for four years or five years as the case may be, is there anything that is going to be done to f fish these people out and give them the accreditation that they need? Because a blanket punishment may not be the way to go, or what do you think? Uh, well, I, I do not also think that it's a blanket punishment. Uh, it's just as you know, when t t developments like this um, come up, uh, different media organizations uh, report it from the angles that um, make it that, that is uh, that are convenient for them. And so, if you uh, read the materials coming from the desk of the relevant authorities uh, in the Federal Ministry of Education, you will understand that there are specific uh, cases that they are dealing with, and they have set up um, a committee to um, move over to, to, to Benin Republic, specifically to investigate into that matter. And this has arisen as a result of the brilliant work done by a young man who uh, went through a certain process to verify the information he had that prompted his investigative uh, you know, uh, uh, journalism, which we should you know, give him credit for. But um, I, I want to confirm that, um, uh, interestingly, this university that uh, is involved in this matter is also an accredited university in Benin Republic. And so uh, we, we won't be uh, fair to the university and to all their um, graduates, especially those who have finished their programs, or even those who are studying there currently, and even the, the country um, where this, this university operates. If, if we um, begin to look at uh, everyone as being the same, uh, even in our own country, we have had cases of, you know, Olu Wale here, where people, you know, pick <laughs> print certificates for themselves. And uh, even from, uh, if you go into the parliament, you're likely to find politicians who even from our own universities here have, have, have picked up certificates without necessarily uh, going through uh, appropriate, uh, you know, training 
uh, and, and procedures to, to be able to have them. So um, if uh, the people involved in the investigation are diligent, they will treat every matter on, on merit. Um, so certainly, uh, if we deal with it on the basis of throwing away the, the child with the bathwater, we'll, we'll be wrong. But more fundamentally, I think we should start asking ourselves the question, how did we get to where we are? Uh, is it that we are incapable of um, providing enough universities that will give our, our young people the training and, uh, and certificates they need to be able to um, put food on the table for their families? I think that the major challenge we have in our hands is the fact that um, uh, we haven't put in place appropriate uh, career management system across all levels of education in Nigeria that will help young people to know where the opportunities they are seeking are, especially in our country. We, we, can, we can accommodate every child in Nigeria who wants to go to university without having to go outside. The only challenge we have is the absence of the career management system which can help young people identify where those opportunities are. So we haven't managed the system well, and that's why young people are looking outside of the country for um, the certificates that they think they need. Okay, well, now that we know that um, it's not only a Bene and Togo thing, it happens in uh, Nigeria as well, and also outside. We've heard stories coming from Toronto, we've heard stories coming from even Chicago in recent uh, past, and so many other places. Um, what do you think can be done to prevent this kind of a thing? You know, because when someone comes with a certificate, there should be some kind of mechanism that will fish out the fake ones and the genuine ones. Well, first, uh, we have to um, do public relations for education in Nigeria. Uh, there is this idea that education is scam. And when young people speak like that, what they are telling you is not that certificate is scam, but that education is scam. In other words, you do not need to be knowledgeable and skillful to, to, uh, to, to acquire wealth. And because they have seen a lot of politicians who have become very wealthy without having knowledge that matches you know, the kind of um, wealth that they now possess. Uh, earlier uh, on your show, I listened to the conversation you had with the person who did, you know, newspaper review with you, mm -hmm. and we, we, you, you were making the point, um, you know, highlight and uh, amplifying what one of the newspapers did actually report that um, the budget of about five, fifteen different universities is is, is less, is lower mm -hmm. than what um, the, the National Assembly is going to use to run their affairs this year. But more fundamentally, really is the fact that the capital budget, the federal uh, capital budget for education this year is actually less than what uh, the, Fed, the National Assembly is going to spend. Uh, if we take it from that angle, then we understand how serious the matter is. So the money we're going to use to do capital project for all universities across you know, uh, the country, especially at the federal level, that money is, is less than what the National Assembly is going to spend. So we are not... Uh, providing the capacity we need to be able to accommodate the aspirations of young people in Nigeria who are desirous of acquiring high-level skills that will enable them to contribute to national development. And so if we continue to have this kind of situation, then we are incentivizing you know, people who have to look outside of our country to get to get uh, you know what, what, what they are looking for. I, I find it sad. Uh, we shouldn't be here uh, because uh, rather than Nigerians going to Togo and, and Ghana and, uh, and Bene and Cameroon to seek uh, education. Those countries should be coming here. And we have seen that in the past, really. I did my undergraduate program at the University of Calabar. And I know that in those days, many of my cosmetics came from Cameroon. It's no longer so. Nigerians, rather than, you know, uh, welcoming people from Cameroon to come here and study, we are not going to Cameroon and, you know, Bene and these other places to go and study because we have mismanaged the entire system here. Uh, while chasing things that do not have um, eternal value. Mm. Okay, let's start to tabulate some of these problems that need to be addressed. Beyond just the budget, which is seven point something in, in, in our national budget for 2024, uh, we were expecting like uh, from 15% at least, if we cannot get to the 25% that is recommended. But now we have seven point something percent in the budget. Beyond the budget, what are the things that need to be put in place or put back in place to make Nigeria a citadel of learning that other countries will be coming for education tourism as well? We, well, uh, we, we, need, we need to uh, build systems. We don't really have systems in place across, across, all, across all industries, 
uh, and education levels in our country, and that's very problematic. You know, if you if you look at the re the report that um, you know prompted the ban, you will see that that young man who investigated into into this uh, ugly situation um, had passed through national youth service before, right. and in the course of doing this investigation, she, she, he passed through it again, and he did so successfully. The system was built to reject anyone who has passed through the system before, but he was able to navigate his way through, even earn money, you know, uh, collected money from the federal ports, because there's no system. They would not have a robust technology that actually says no to anybody who has passed through the system before. And even along the line of his investigation, he was He, he, he had seen, you know, that had gone wrong. They were all disputing him, <laughs> not knowing that he had, all, he had all the evidence. Because the reason why they are disputing was because they were not, uh, they are not using a robust system to run, to, to run, uh, to, 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 to run, you know, these uh, agencies that uh, they, they, they should pretend, which I think is very, very problematic. So it's not just about money. We haven't got the skills. Um, if you are not involved in the system, you will keep thinking that uh, we have. Uh, great skills in the relevant ministries and, and, and agencies of government. That's not true. I mean, I'm a researcher in the system, and I tell you that I weep when I go through the system and I see the kind of people who run uh, these places we trust so much. That we don't have a system in place that fishes out, you know, uh, evil people, that fishes out those who are undermining our system, that uh, ensures that only those who deserve to function within the system function with the system. This is just about what happened in Benin. If we go and do an audit of our children who are now studying in Nigerian universities, we are likely to record that over 30% of them are, 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 are in the universities when they have no business being there because the system is, is, is very bad, it's very porous. The wrong people have been let in, and the young people who are probably competent enough to be able to benefit from university education are not having access to these places. And that's what is just, you know, pushing them to go outside and look for where they can get what they're looking for. So we must be very careful how we are, you know, assessing these things. So uh, to deal with your question directly, we need to build systems first and foremost. But if you build a system and you don't have the capacity to run the system, you run into a bigger problem because people will now take advantage of, of, of those systems to, to create uh, much bigger problems. And we have seen this in the way we run elections in our country, where you even try to introduce technology and the wrong people get into the system, take hold of the technology and, and use it to mess up the entire you know, system, wasting, wasting everybody's time and national resources. So we need to train our people. We also need to uh, invest in... Uh, getting Nigerians to believe in their country and to become more patriotic than, 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 than we are currently. Nigerians are, are willing to take money to sabotage the system that is built to, that is being built to help them. And this is not very good for us. But again, the question is, why is that happening? It's because they see older people, they see politicians waste resources and sit in places that they do not have right to belong to, you know, to, to, to sit on. And uh, so if we start from kindergarten, uh, show good examples to our children, train them properly, and put systems in place that will ensure that the wrong people don't, go, don't get into, 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 into very important places, especially sensitive sectors like the, everything you have in education, then Nigeria will start moving forward. So we, let's stop deceiving ourselves into thinking that once we provide all the money we think we need to run our education system, then all the problems will disappear. No, you have to train the people. You have to run a campaign that will make Nigerians know that when the system works well, then it, everybody, everybody, everybody benefits. And when the system fails, everybody loses. Even when, as an individual, you make money off the nation, uh, you know, you, you can only enjoy that money for a short while. When everything begins to crumble, you discover that everybody is at risk. So we need to invest in these areas. Now, when you talk about building systems and uh, using the right system and all that, I just couldn't understand much. Is it a problem? of the manpower or the problem of technology or what problem? Because, uh, for instance, if the NYSC is built in such a way that it will reject people who have passed through it already and it couldn't reject this man, uh, something like that happens in, let's say, the Corporate Affairs Commission. You cannot choose a name that has been chosen before. So 
if that can be done for the Corporate Affairs Commission, why can it? It's not like it's a, an alien technology. Why is it so difficult to have it in every aspect of our economy, every aspect of our national life, to have these things work? Yeah, you, 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 this is an open secret. You know what the right answer is. Uh, we always uh, talk about having uh, round pegs in uh, square pegs in round holes in our country. So when you have the wrong people manning sensitive um, desks in, in 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 our country, then this is the kind of situation you find yourself in. So we haven't got the right manpower in many, in in a lot of significant places and. In some places, too, we have got the people who have the skills, but because they are not paid well, they sabotage the system in order to get what they think they deserve. So, uh, 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 so it's, it's a hydra-headed problem. It's a bit complicated uh, because uh, sometimes the right people who have the skills don't do the right things because you are not motivating them well. You find this even in, the, in our security apparatus. If you talk to the average policeman, he's likely to tell you that if they if they want to deal with four one nine system in our country, they will shut it down. It won't happen again. But the reason why these things flourish is because you don't pay the average policeman well, and you expect him, you know, somebody you pay, uh, let's say seventy thousand naira, you ask him to go and chase a, a thief who who has uh, a, a two billion naira in his account and with little or nothing to do with it. So he brings out only one percent of that money and he gives it to the policeman. The policeman calculates his salary over a period of five years. He discovered that what we collect from this guy in in, in, in just you know one minute, well, we pay him for more than ten years. So he collects it. So we need to uh, get more, uh, more 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 realistic. We need to pay people well. And then keep upgrading their skills because when it comes to technology, which these guys are trying to make, make you know rubbish, what happens is that technology keeps uh, getting updated. Uh, we, we don't create most of the technology; we only buy them and borrow them. So we need to keep sending our people on training to learn how to ensure that um, uh, the thieves, the uh, evil people, don't keep sabotaging these systems, you know, successfully. That's what the evil people do. You have you you have your phones. You have different apps on your phone, and you know that even on your laptop. And you know that regularly you have to update them for you to remain secure. So if you don't keep updating them, you keep running into problems. So in many of these places where we have, uh, you know, very important objectives, you know, we, we, to, to achieve, what is happening is that we, we, we put, we buy a technology from America or Germany, and we don't keep maintaining it. We don't keep, you know, upgrading our skills to be able to run, you know, those systems appropriately. That's what I think. Is, is the problem that we're facing. I'm involved in the system. I work with the people who uh, run these places. Sometimes when I have, sit down and have conversations with them, I, I feel very discouraged um, that um, that is where, very disappointed that that is where we are. And we need to do something very urgently about it. Well, but it's an unfortunate that in Nigeria, there are two problems. One problem is that we place so much importance on the degrees and it feels as if if you don't have a degree, you're a second class citizen. And so people are desperate to get these degrees uh, by any means. And the second thing is you just pointed out that we need to train and retrain people. Training seems to be uh, something that is uh, no longer in our vocabulary. I used to know that people were em employed in those days and then you're training, uh, you get training on the job and you, they keep training you. Now they're they expecting you to be 20 years old uh, with seven years experience and fresh from the university. And we don't even have holiday jobs, vacation jobs that will give people experience. So how are we going to achieve this? It's, it's scary to me. It's, it, it seems as if it's something that is not realizable. Is there a format we need to use? Yeah, the, our problem, our our situation is not hopeless, but it's really very difficult because we haven't got the right thinkers in very um, in, in high places. We need policy formulators who understand that this is um, this is where we are and confront this reality that we haven't got the right people in the right places and that we haven't also put the right systems in place as we speak. Um, the evidence I have tells me that we haven't got um, the right thinkers in these sensitive you know, areas in our country. And so if you want to move Nigeria forward, the president um, has to recognize that the way to make appointment is not to give um, those sensitive uh, 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 desks to people who haven't got the right skills. You know, move around, <laughs> you know, make a list of the people who are, for example, ministers in the current dispensation. And you discover that Many of them are, 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 are having portfolios that uh, they didn't trend for. 
And um, that's very uh, unfortunate. A country that is uh, very hungry for development is a country that should emphasize uh, meritocracy, at least, you know, for once. And, but we haven't got that uh, yet. And so long as that remains our, our circumstance, then uh, we'll continue to complain and uh, until the president recognizes that we need to put the right people in the right places. And the for, for that long, we will continue to, to live with these challenges. Okay, um, I've asked you this question before in our, our, our interaction, not today, uh, but um, there's this talk about having more universities here for the benefit of those who could not uh, join us on the day we had that show. There's this talk about having more universities in Nigeria, and some people are thinking that is one of the solutions to our educational problems. What's your response to that? No, certainly. I did tell you that um, I was fortunate uh, as a doctoral researcher, you know, to have made that the focus of my investigation. And the verdict that came out of uh, my research is that we don't need more universities. We, we have enough. All we need to do is to um, provide the right capacity to the uh, universities we already have in place and give them the infrastructure they need and then put a career management system in place that will advertise the opportunities we have in those places to, to young children so that they recognize where to go when what they want is to go to university and receive good education. At the moment, um, we, uh, we are uh, duplicating uh, the things that are already in place, and that's very unfortunate for us. Lagos alone you know, can accommodate, I tell you, if we use the resources within Lagos well, it can accommodate over 25% of young people in this country who want to go to university and benefit from it. And so we have to recognize we also do not have to train in, in conventional ways, really. There's National Open University, for example. If that system is managed well, why, why do you want to go to Benin Republic to get a university degree? National Open University is structured to accommodate you know, people who want to work earn money while going to school. We have that in England. That's an international open university in England is, is the university that, that has the largest number of students in that country. We have one in that country, but it's not being well managed, and that's why young people are still insisting that they have to go and sit in one place for four years, you know, not any money for that duration of time. And that's very, very unfortunate for us. Now, many colleges of education across Nigeria now have relationships with universities who um, uh, moderate the degree programs that they run, meaning that you can actually attend a college of education but finish from there after four years with a university degree, moderated by University of Ibadan, by University of Lagos, by University of Nigeria, Asoka, Amadubelo. But unfortunately, the average Nigerian child is not aware of this. So when everybody finishes, they all they are all heading towards. It shouldn't be so. You know, it, within this Lagos, at Akoka alone, there's Federal University of uh, Federal College of Education and Technical at Akoka that runs degree programs that are moderated by, you know, collaborating universities that are federal universities in this country. And several other colleges of education within Lagos and outside Lagos across the country are providing similar opportunities. Unfortunately, the average young child does not know. So because we are not creating awareness regarding these opportunities, people keep looking towards Ghana. And interestingly, if you do my kind of work as, a, as an educational researcher, you will understand that the Ghana you are going to, the Benin Republic you are going to, they don't necessarily have better, they are not going to provide you better university education compared to what University of you know, Ibado or, or Unilag or Amadi Bello or Nsoka can provide you, or even or, or Calabar or University of George. It's just lack of knowledge. So we don't need to keep wasting our time and, uh, and putting resources where we shouldn't be putting them, you know, creating more universities. I think that National Universities Commission is, is committing a great error and misleading um, our, our government into thinking that the way to move forward in terms of solving the problem of access to university education is to create more universities. That's absolutely untrue. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised and hope that somebody is going to uh, insist uh, anytime soon that this is not the way to go. Okay, uh, before we wrap up, let, let me just ask you this. If you were the education minister with a sum of, of for just above uh, 7 uh, billion, oh, not 7 billion, sorry, 7% 7 7 of the, the budget, with that kind of money that is budgeted for um, education, what will be your lowest hanging fruits that you would want to tackle in 2024? I will, I, will train, I will train teachers first, 
once you get teachers trained across board from kindergarten to university when i say teachers here i'm using teachers as a generic word that you know captures everyone who has a responsibility to uh, help children and young people to acquire the knowledge skills and values they need to be able to play their roles in society effectively so i'm going to put my money into training teachers so that they can produce the thinkers we need to be able to solve the problems that um, that that confront us mm -hmm. and so infrastructure uh, will come next you know give those teachers after you have trained them the right tools to do their job and then pay them well it's very important that we pay teachers well across all levels of the education system so that they can stay here and work with us as, as governments across the country to um, give our children the um, orientation they need and of course the, 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 the skills, the knowledge and values they, they, they should have today to be able to um, compete globally and 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 and, uh, and 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 get all the opportunities they need to be able to make a difference in their country and contribute to uh, the uh, peace and progress of the world we live in. So, um, so train your teachers, um, uh, pay them well, uh, provide them the infrastructure they need, and you see Nigeria begin to flourish. Other countries will will, will start looking in this direction to uh, come and you know receive good quality education rather than the current situation where. Uh, our people are heading aside to look for what they shouldn't be heading aside for. Okay. Uh, well, we'd like to thank you, Dr. Peter for, uh, Ogudoro, for coming on the show this morning. It's always very enlightening when we have you on the show. Thank you so much. Snap. We've been talking to Dr. Peter Ogudoro, education researcher on the show. We were looking at uh, uh, the suspension of certificates from Bene Republic and also Togo following a report by uh, a COVID journalist who went, got his, um, uh, his certificate within weeks and also got into NYSC to serve uh, his country for a second time, having had that experience um, after finishing school in Nigerian University. And uh, that has led to this. We do hope that the people who genuinely went to these schools and uh, finished will have the opportunity to do what they need to do and become what they uh, want to become or the, what they set out to become, that all the bad eggs were, are not going to give them such a bad name that they cannot achieve what they wanted to achieve. Whatever that uh, research will come out with, that committee will come out with and all that, let it be very transparent enough and let it be for the benefit of Nigeria and Nigerians. We'd like to also call on all the ministers, whoever has been given a, a, an opportunity to serve this country in whatever capacity, should do their very best to make sure that Nigeria uh, doesn't continue to be analog, doesn't continue to be corrupt and all that. We've, we're seeing what is happening in uh, passport issuance. The minister has said that it shouldn't take more than a few days to get your passport and now everything will be automated. Uh, you can just go to the internet, to your computer, and then apply for a passport, and you have it within weeks. And he's, he made a statement. He asked the question, what, are the people, do they not have sense, people working in the passport office, that they will tell, for instance, a married woman to live where they are, maybe Enugu or Lagos or wherever in Nigeria, to have to go to Abuja just for a change of name? And we've been asking ourselves this question, all the things that happen, verification exercise, you have to carry someone who is on a stretcher, who is dying to come for verification all the time. You do these things that could be done on the internet. And we're asking ourselves, are we, are we playing in this country? So kudos to the minister who is doing this and we'll keep calling their names as they are doing well. And we'll also be calling the names of those people who are not doing well. Like, like right now, let's just watch them. Like Shoyinka said, he is giving one year for this administration to perform uh, before he begins to call them out if they do not perform. But Nigerians cannot wait for a year. So right now we've entered 2024. Let's see how the first quarter of 2024 will be and the second quarter, the third quarter, and then the fourth quarter, and we continue to assess all of them. The president has said it's either you perform or you get fired. Let's see how many people will be fired for non-performance and how many people will be given their awards for performances. Well, it's been a wonderful time being with you this morning. We do hope that you too had a wonderful time being with us. Uh, it's already the third day in the new year. So it's still good to say Happy New Year to you. We hope that 2024 will be very awesome. 
My name is Nyamgul at Gaji. Let's come back tomorrow for more. Bye for now.